Hi, I'm Dave Young from Cryptocoin.news. This is Bitcoin this week. Bitcoin struggles against the surging Ethereum. Korean Bitcoin exchanges in troubled times. Bitcoin payments more trouble than value. Goldman Sachs jumps on board with Bitcoin. South African school takes Bitcoin tuition fees. South African business school called Red and Yellow is allowing students to pay its tuition fees, saying, Many youngsters having made a good return on their investment in cryptocurrencies, they now want to use this digital cash to invest in their education. These are exactly the kind of forward-thinking students we need. Other schools that have made this leap before include the University of Lucerne in Switzerland, the ESMT Business School in Berlin, University of Nicosia in Cyprus and King's College USA. With such a dearth of suitably qualified blockchain experts, we wonder why many more universities are not flocking towards this move. A couple of leading financial analysts from Goldman Sachs have conceded that Bitcoin is a valid currency, especially in troubled economies. The news quickly spread through the mainstream media as further evidence of Bitcoin becoming mainstream. In December also, Goldman Sachs announced that it was planning to launch a cryptocurrency trading desk in the same month that Merrill Lynch told all of its brokers not to touch anything to do with Bitcoin. And in the same week that Goldman Sachs jumped on board, Microsoft first jumped overboard, on board, I'm confused. They started the week by saying they would no longer take Bitcoin payments and then, as the story spread, reversed their position quickly saying it had been a mistake ever announcing it in the FAQ section. Also this week, embarrassingly for the North American blockchain conference in Miami, they found themselves unable to process Bitcoin payments due to network congestion and high transaction fees. Let's also remember in December, online game supplier Steam had to stop taking Bitcoin payments, citing volatile swings and high transaction fees. In South Korea, a country obsessed with cryptocurrencies, everybody's bracing themselves for the expected new regulations that might put a complete ban on the trading of cryptocurrencies. On top of this, Korean exchanges Coin1 and BitHum found themselves being raided by the police and tax authorities with allegations of illegal gambling and tax evasion. Let's remember, Ubit Exchange, also in Korea, recently filed for bankruptcy after being hacked for one-fifth of its clients' funds. At the present, 100,000 South Koreans have signed a petition calling on the government to abandon their plans to ban trading on cryptocurrency. With rumours of a complete ban on Korean trading, Prices dropped this week and CoinMarketCap unexpectedly removed all Korean exchanges from their listings, which to the uneducated made it look like the market cap had dropped by $1 billion, setting off a panic sell in some quarters. Bitcoin steadily decreased across the week from $16,500 to under $14,000 no doubt also affected by Ethereum's rise and it's stripping the general market of the energy to grow. I'm Dave Young from Cryptocoin.news. This was Bitcoin This Week. Stay current, stay valid, stay tuned. Till next week.